Now I'm going to speak about the power to sustain. However you feel supported in life, to that extent you experience the power to sustain. The support could be due to family, friends, your associates, your beliefs, values, environment, possessions, good health, knowledge, economics, politics, law and order, uh, and the list goes on. In fact, the civilization you are part of is designed to sustain you. On the other hand, the minute a good portion of your support falls away, you probably freak out. It's like the rug is being pulled from under you. In addition, we are sustained by our bodies, which of course all began in the comfort of the womb. When we are loved, we also feel sustained. On the other hand, we have the power to sustain other living beings like plants, dogs, cats, other species, and of course people. We can sustain them physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. When our focus shifts from concealment towards sustainability, our awareness, attention, and reward system move into the power of sustaining. In other words, sustaining ourselves and others while still in a state of ignorance, inattention, and addiction is quite challenging. So where does this power come from? Ultimately, it stems from the power of love. Love, as we all know, is the great integrator. It pulls people together. It connects the dots. When you want to build something that will stand the test of time, you need to connect things in a manner that is durable. Technology is one example of humans building a sustainable platform. In many cases, sustaining happens in life through trial and error. For example, evolution follows such a process. This universe has so far managed to sustain itself, and we do the same thing, sometimes out of love and at other times out of fear of death and dissolution. Remember, fear is simply love put in reverse gear. Fear arises from a sense of separation, that is, when we feel unable to connect with ourselves and the world. The challenge in attempting to sustain things in a world where everything seems to change moment by moment is that it often leads to the rampant desire to possess stuff, as well as a mind that clings to old habits, behaviors, and perceptions, that hungers for money, recognition, and power, and that tries to maintain the status quo in one's comfort zone. Again, fear underlies all this. None of this is bad per se, because sooner or later we realize that such attempts are not sustainable. Desires and expectations are like a bucket with a hole in the bottom. The bucket can never stay full for long, and the bigger the hole, <laughs> the more frustrating the leakage becomes. Sooner or later, we feel the need to move on. In short, leaky buckets just don't cut it. <laughs> Of the Crown Mudra's attributes, heartfulness is most allied with the capacity to sustain, because love and compassion tend to steady the mind and support us. That doesn't mean that mindfulness and playfulness have no hand in it. It's just that heartfulness often takes the lead in pulling us out of concealment. We've all seen people suffering, and then along comes a compassionate being who lifts them out of the mire of misery providing them a chance to experience gratitude. The outcome would be very different if they met an intellectual who gave them a stiff lecture on the nature of suffering. In essence, people respond to the heart. The same applies to our relationship with ourselves. Critical self-lectures on what is wrong with us are never as effective as self-acceptance. In short, Heartfulness rules. Again, if you wish to access the power to sustain, the practices of mindfulness, heartfulness, and playfulness all serve as guides. Mindfulness teaches you how to step away from the limitations of your experience through detached observation until eventually the sense of I dissolves. What is sustained is the witness state. Playfulness guides your actions to become more selfless. A selfless person, by definition, has no self to sustain because they see themselves in all beings. Therefore, sustainability is naturally directed towards everyone and everything. Heartfulness also strengthens your will, courage, and discipline, 
which helps sustain you through difficult times. There's a loud call for greater sustainability in our world today. We've messed up this planet to such an extent it may become hard to sustain us for long. We also kill each other off like flies, if not physically, then spiritually, in a bid to control market share, land, and resources, mostly under the guise of religion and ideologies. Meantime, Mother Nature has decided to initiate retaliatory action by activating a host of human predators, the tiny stuff we call viruses. Again, our desires have led us to this point. At the same time, universal consciousness on this planet is changing. We're waking up. Paradoxically, to sustain ourselves, we as a species need to activate the power to destroy what no longer works for us, what conceals the truth. Hopefully, we get it right and don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And like in any good movie where there's intense drama, timeliness is of the essence. Timeliness supports the power to sustain. <laughs> if you don't believe it, try showing up late to work three hours every day and see how well you can sustain a living. <laughs> in the meantime, I thank you for sustaining your attention on this video. Have a great day. Namaste.